Eileen Baird Devolo, as the chair of the Department of Women and Gender Studies, I congratulate all our graduates. Although you are graduating into truly unique circumstances, we can't lose sight of the uniqueness of each one of you and the gifts that you will bring to the world. As you might know, CUs is one of the very first women's studies programs in the country, and really for that matter, one of the first in the world. You're part of a long and proud tradition in the study of women, gender, and sexuality. Our majors and minors and certificate recipients will be justifiably proud to be part of this intellectual tradition. And I hope that you feel a sense of accompaniment and support by your fellow graduates, as well as the professors, instructors, and staff that make up Women Gender Studies as you face the challenges that come with this unique graduation context, as well as the challenges and the joys that lay ahead. Women and Gender Studies is an academic discipline, but our origins are tied to a social movement rooted originally in women's rights and feminism, but now incorporating a more comprehensive vision of rights that extend to gender identity, sexuality, race, ability, and beyond. We would not be here without social activism. And part of social activism is facing challenges with certain tools, most fundamentally for us, that entails focusing upon how events, policies, and mindsets impact the most vulnerable, the most marginalized. Our 2020 graduates are an amazing representation of that women and gender studies commitment to justice and change. Let me tell you a bit more about the degrees that we are conferring because the women and gender studies class of 2020 has so much to be proud of. The 170 Women and Gender Studies majors and minors are committed to academia and service to the community. Our students are recipients of the highest and most select honors given in the College of Arts and Sciences for academic excellence as well as their extracurricular and volunteer pursuits. The average GPA for Women and Gender Studies students is consistently higher than the average for the college. Women, Gender Studies majors and minors are clearly excelling across their courses at CU, and over one-third of Women, Gender Studies majors pursue a double major. This is not to mention their paid work and their volunteer pursuits as they set their sights on social change, both large and small. They leave CU with a local and global outlook with plenty to say to a changing world. So congratulations, class of 2020. You did it. We'll miss you. We miss you already, so please stay in touch. just wanted to congratulate you all on your graduation. I'm shooting this outside because at my graduation, one of the speakers said, I don't remember anything from my graduation. I don't remember any of the speeches. I just remember the sound of the birds. And he had us all sit there in silence in this wooded amphitheater and listen to the birds for a minute. And so I want you to all go outside after you've watched this video and take a moment to just appreciate the birds or the wind or the fun and busy sounds of your street and think, yes, this is what is happening. This is a moment when my future starts and I really hope the very best for you and for those futures. Congratulations. Women and Gender Studies students, I am so grateful to know the many of you that I've had the opportunity to meet during your time in the department. It may have been something brief, answering a question or an email, or saying hi when you came to the cottage. Whatever it was, working with you, the students, in this department are the highlights of being a staff member. To each of you completing your WGST degree, a minor, the graduate certificate, and those receiving an award or scholarship. A huge congratulations. 
You all are what feminists look like, and I wish you all my best on your graduation. Congratulations, women and gender studies graduates. I want to commend you on all that you have accomplished and to remind you that you are ready for this next journey, whatever it may entail. You have already survived so very much, individually and collectively. If I have one piece of advice to offer, it is not to forget to hope. As some of you have heard me say, perhaps many times in different classes, social justice movements are inherently optimistic. While we're often accused of being angry or cynical, which we might be justifiably, hope is what leads us to believe that another world is possible. So use your many talents, your unique vantage points and knowledge, and your hope to build that world. We need you out there, now more than ever. The Department of Women and Gender Studies is delighted to present a Commitment to Community Activism Award to WGST graduate certificate student Jasmine Bates. The faculty have been impressed with Bates' leadership in co-creating a statue to honor Latinx activist Los Ace de Boulder, as well as by her advocacy for its permanent display on the CU Boulder campus. We commend Bates for her activism on behalf of feminist and anti-racist issues at the University of Colorado and in the larger community. The Lucille Berkeley Buchanan Scholarship is awarded to a student who demonstrates a commitment towards social justice and who may be the first generation in their family to attend college. This year's recipient is Nina Patterson. Nina came to us recently from the University of Michigan Flint and has quickly established a record of service here at CEU. She has served at the Latina Safe House Initiative as a volunteer fundraiser and at the Planned Parenthood of the Rocky Mountains as a public affairs intern. Last year, she was also a member of WGSD's very own Gender Justice League. Congratulations, Nina. Next, we have the Jean Dubofsky Scholarship, given in honor of the first woman justice of the Colorado Supreme Court. This award is given to a women and gender studies major and is based on academic record, education, and career goals, community and campus service, and a demonstrated commitment to raising awareness of and combating oppression in all its forms. This year, the award goes to Kelsey Rickert. The committee was impressed with Kelsey's stellar academic performance combined with her record of community service. She has played a key role in creating space on our campus for queer women, leading the peer group Queer Women in Community, and joining student government as a gender and sexuality liaison. As one of the scholars in the Miramontes Arts and Sciences program, she has also served as a mentor for incoming underrepresented scholars. Congratulations, Kelsey. Finally, we have the S. Antoinette Bigelow Scholarship. This scholarship is a new and very special one. Originally created in 1929 and funded in the 1940s, it was given in honor of the then Dean of Women at CU. And originally, it was awarded to, quote, one or more girls attending the university, end quote. The award now goes to a WGSD major annually. And this is the first time our department's committee is selecting the recipients. We are thrilled to honor four of our WGSD majors with this award in recognition of their strong and promising academic performances and their dedication to the WGSD community throughout their course of study. Our recipients this year are Kat Morrison, Bridget Nelson, Kelsey Rickert, and incoming WGSD freshman, Crystal Guzman Coral. Congratulations to all four of you and to all our scholarship recipients. We look forward to hearing more about your achievements as you complete your studies at CU. Hi, Emma. This is Professor Jacobs. I want to take this opportunity to personally congratulate you on all of your accomplishments at the University of Colorado. You have been an outstanding student, a wonderful peer, and you have contributed so much to the Department of Women and Gender Studies. Your honors thesis is of the highest caliber, and you are so deserving of the summa cum laude designation that you receive for the superior work. You have been a fabulous research assistant, and your work with Hillel has made such an important difference. Thank you for all your efforts during the Women and Gender Studies RPAC process. I wish you all the best in your future. I know you will be a great success, and I will miss you very much. Take good care. Hi. 
This is Dr. Soros, and I'm so pleased to be able to present the Outstanding Senior Award to Emmeline Kelly. In my experience, Emmeline Kelly is a fantastic student. She is a budding queer theorist. She's also an activist leader on campus, and I've been able to see her lead several events for the Gender Justice League. And most importantly, she's really a kind person. Congratulations, Emmeline. You are the kind of a fierce feminist that we are proud to call a graduate of this department. You're going to do great things. Keep in touch. It's my pleasure to announce that the 2020 Outstanding Senior Award goes to Effie Shannon. The Women and Gender Studies faculty chose Effie because she embodies the spirit and action of inclusive feminist leadership. Effie is a Women and Gender Studies major and a sociology minor with a deep interest in critical studies of criminology, including advocating for those who are incarcerated. For several years, Effie has also contributed considerably to the vibrancy and dynamism of Women and Gender Studies through her work with the Gender Justice League. And I had the pleasure of working with Effie in the Gender Justice League, and she consistently worked in a compassionate and passionate way that built solidarity among group members and helped the, push the group's activism in new directions. And the fact that she did this while overcoming some serious personal challenges was all the more admirable. So we congratulate Effie on all she has accomplished, and we're thrilled to give her this Outstanding Senior Award.
this is my final project for women and gender studies um and i basically took one of the most famous chapters from betty friedan's book the feminine mystique a chapter called the problem that has no name and turned it into blackout poetry um so on the right hand side you see my poem um and i basically reframed it from being a piece that was pretty much all about white feminists into a piece that was talking more about like activism broadly um and on the left side of the page i put down all of the really influential authors the the names of people that are not highlighted the really influ- influential authors that i've read throughout my time at cu in women and gender studies who i think exemplify these voices of rebellion as it says in the poem um and then the highlighted names are all the really really influential professors who i've had or the um staff in women and gender studies who i've worked with who have been super important during my time at cu I just wanted to take the time to reflect on my last four years at CU and to thank the Women and Gender Studies Department for putting together this yearbook for us. Um, I think it's great that we get to celebrate the community that we've built over the past four years, and I just wanted to say that it's been extremely nice to see familiar faces all over campus and to know that I have a community um, in such a large population of people. And it's been refreshing to know that there are others out there that care as much as I do about people and our communities and just the world and making our lives better. And I wanted to thank the Invest Community Studies Program um, and Sabrina Sideris and Allie Van Buskirk for supporting my personal growth over the years and really believing in me and... um, nurturing, I don't know, my growth into who I am and helping me discover my passions. So thank you. I want to start by saying I think this quote is very pertinent for graduating right now and I just want to say that for this class with all that we've learned and done over the past years however many years in terms of theory action community organizing to take this knowledge this experience that we've gained and use it and remember why why we show up to to shift to disrupt and to really address and confront the systems that harm so that we can have some kind of collective liberation So here's to the class of 2020. Congrats.
just going to read a poem. Uh, it's called This Wonderful Opportunity. It's written by Kathy Hong. May all beings, seen and unseen, be well, happy, and peaceful, including ourselves. May there be peace in the world, peace in our hearts, peace in our minds. May we use this wonderful opportunity of human life to awaken. May we be grateful for wisdom and compassion, this infinite boundlessness that surrounds us, waiting to be used by us to open our hearts and minds so that we may see things as they truly are, how brief our lives, how dependent upon others we are, and so with each act may we bring wholesomeness, humility, and the courage to do no harm, not least of all to ourselves. As we journey through this life, may we move deeper into insight and see things as they truly are, this wonderful opportunity to awaken. May we be grateful for the teachers and all their guises who appear before us. May we love those who are hardest to love including ourselves may leaders who will work for the peace of the planet step forward and may we support them may those who have gone before us rest in peace rest in comfort rest in joy and may we remember to remember them i just want to give a big shout out to my parents who have been with me this whole time on this crazy journey and who have always been there for me and loved me unconditionally and my friends as well, um, especially Dan, who has always been there for me and had my back no matter what. And I just don't know how I could have done it without you. Um, also, all my friends at the cottage, uh, just being there and everyone who's been there in these years, I just always felt so welcomed and loved and supported. And also to Dr. Soares, just for being such a radical and loving educator and really inspiring me with your words every day and making me believe in myself. So thank you. A quote that inspires me is by Fannie Lou Hamer and it says, if I fall, I fall five feet four inches forward in the fight for freedom. I'm not backing off. charming, also known as worm grunting, worm fiddling, and worm snoring, is a method of coaxing earthworms out of the depths of the earth for your own purposes, whether it's to uproot them from their peaceful lives, to use them as bait, or just to say hi. It's also a competitive sport where worm charmers vie for the prestigious honor of being crowned top worm grunter. In Sop Choppy, Florida, the best worm charmers are titled Worm Grunting King and Queen, and a worm grunting ball is held in their honor. Worm charming can be achieved using a variety of methods, but most involve vibrating the soil. The assumption is that the vibrations mimic those caused by digging moles, which causes the worms to fear for their lives and move to the surface. To vibrate the soil, worm fiddlers may drive a wooden stake, called a stob, into the ground, and then rub it using a rooping iron. You can also run a dulled saw across the top.